Hello and welcome to another episode of Steel Fair Supremacy with, of course, me, Steel Fair, recording this video as my tournament report from the UK National Championships. I'm going to run through my process of picking a deck, how I chose what I was going to play, um, how I made that pivot fairly later on and how, you know, that impacted me mentally and how difficult that was. Um, we're also going to talk a bit about the tournament on the day, uh, my own performance, the decisions I made, my strategies, those kind of things. I think you'll find this interesting if you've got your own national tournament coming up, as it will give you, um, I guess, just something to benchmark your own thoughts against. Uh, we've already done a lot of videos about, you know, like how to choose a deck and, you know, whether to play what you're comfortable with or try and do something spicy. You know, all those kind of discussions have been going on already, but I think it's interesting to kind of delve down a bit into what I actually did and how I actually ended up Playing as that really has the main impact on, you know, how things turned out in the end. Okay, so leading up to the event, I had a good idea of what I wanted to play. Well, no, okay, that's not really true. I was really struggling with what to play, right? So I had obviously done very well at the RTN season with Katsu, um, winning two RTNs, making the final of another one. So I was feeling very confident on the Katsu front. But the problem came in basically testing against the new Tales of Aria meta, specifically like the addition of um, the addition of cards like uh, specifically Tear Asunder into Bravo um, really started to cause some problems for me, um, especially sort of as we got um, later on into the meta, I started to test more into Bravo, and I was like, Katsu's matchup from this went from like 60-40 to more like 70-30, and I wasn't feeling very happy. Um, the Herald Aggro matchup as well into Prism began to get a bit more difficult, because um, essentially without Chain in the meta, it felt like it was a lot easier for that deck to focus on like Red Phantom Eclasms, putting out the air additions, like a lot more ways to push damage um, that it hadn't really been able to do when worrying about chain as well. So um, there was kind of just like this shift that made it feel like Katsu was an uphill battle. And I was talking to my friend Simon, who obviously uh, plays Katsu and won an RTN Katsu as well. And we were like, well, okay, are we going to play Katsu? And um, he started testing Earth Briar, which you see got him into the top four of the um, UK Nationals. I started testing... Levia, which I thought was an interesting um, spicy choice, and I started testing um, Lexi as well, which I thought was an interesting choice. Uh, but really, I was like, well, Katsu is what I'm really comfortable with, and I started to get quite busy at work, so actually having the ability to play um, to play Katsu very well, I kind of had the notion in my head that even if I took Katsu, I would still be able to, we'll say, get, you know, a... Hmm, um, you know, maybe like, um, you know, at least get to day two, definitely get to like, um, you know, definitely get into the, the top 24, if not the top eight, because of my drafting practice, and I had done a lot of that. So I was kind of a, of the idea that maybe Katsu wasn't the best meta pick, but that because I played him very well, maybe he was the best meta pick for me. Um, and I think that would have held up. So I think bar certain matchups, I think that would have held up. I think had I taken Katsu, I probably could have made day two as well. Um, but that didn't happen. So what happened instead was that we started to see this um, list coming out from the calling in Cincinnati of this Lightning Briar deck. And my friends had also sent me a similar list uh, a week or two ago um, saying, hey, you should give this a try. And I had been starting to give it a try. Um, and then also I've been sent lists for things like Viscerai Aggro and a Lightning Lexi list as well that was very, very strong. So I started to look at those lists thinking that maybe Katsu wasn't actually the best aggro that I could put forward um, and that actually the best aggro that I was going to put forward might come from a different deck. And that thought had started to kick around my head and I had started to think, okay, maybe I can't play Katsu if I want to play aggro or I need to switch to something like Bravo with only two weeks to test, which I think would have been a mistake because that's actually kind of a hard deck to play. So that's where I was about two weeks to go. And then the calling came out and there was um, the first calling and there was that Lightning Lexi list. I started to practice that. There was a Katsu, so I started to be a bit more comfortable in the idea that maybe I could play a similar Katsu list and I started to test out Red Crane Dances and those kind of things. And then the second calling happened 
and a much more refined lightning briar list got put up. Not perfect. I mean, I've already done a video that you may have already seen, which has the deck tech on that and why I chose to change time snap potions and some other cards uh, in and other changes I think I would make after the event. And I think it's fair to say that I tested that list um, on the Monday we got the results i pretty much started testing that list straight away and the conclusion very much was the list was probably the best aggro list that we were going to see in the format and there wasn't really anything that was going to compete with it in a massive way um just on the aggro front at least and also it had a pretty good matchup into a lot of the decks that katsu had been struggling with like prism like brava so we had this list then that was really you know we thought going to catch a lot of people by surprise people who didn't have as much time to test, people who were scared of pivoting from their favorite hero, or who didn't have the Briar cards necessary to just switch to that hero. Um, so we thought that actually from that point, you might be able to take that deck and get some good wins. And I started practicing it, and Sharif started practicing it, and a few other people started practicing it, with the idea that maybe actually it was the tech that you needed to take in order to win or get at least into the top eight of nationals. So there we were. On about Thursday night, after playing maybe 20 to 30 games over the past like three or four days, and including taking it to my local event um, with the Lightning Briar list, I decided that actually the Lightning Briar list was going to be the best list for me to take to Nationals. I was still very uncertain because obviously Katsu had been my list for the whole RTN season, but at that point I just thought we just kept playing games and it just kept doing well, even against people like Bravo, so I was just like, no, we've got to take this list. Um... So that was finally the decision. I had also done multiple drafts. I had been doing weekly drafts. I had practiced competitive drafts with timers, with friends. I'd done about 15 Tales of Aria drafts. Most of them weren't like super competitive. They were like 10 people, 5 people, 6 people. However many showed up to get a weekly thing. Because organizing 8 people for a draft is very difficult. We also had, um, you know, which hasn't been released for the public yet. But I've told he is going to release it. And when he does, I will do a video of it. But there was also a online drafting tool that someone was developing. Um, we didn't use that that much because also it's just hard to get eight people together um, to practice draft. Um, and also after a while, people were a lot more concerned about what they were playing in CC rather than what they were going to play in draft because draft felt like a, it was much more under control based on the early practice that we had done. So um we were kind of felt good about the draft but still rough on the cc front so we weren't practicing that so when it came time to go into the event you know i had seen i had figured out my deck i was happy with it I was just going to see how it went i had figured out my draft strategy which was to go earth and then try and get old him or briar cards um because i just feel like earth is the strongest um of, and those two heroes are the strongest heroes and if you get earth cards then you can build a really strong deck with either of those two heroes. Prioritizing things like Autumn's Touch that block for three, or um, specific power cards like Turn Timber or Equipment, and just going through with that strategy in mind as your pack one pick ones are going to be sensational cards or pretty solid, you know, cards like that. Um, and I feel like that's kind of where I ended up at the end of the um, event. Um, was with that strategy in mind of an earth draft and um, lots of um, just lots of sort of like and, and, and this lightning briar list. Um, so that's where I went and I went in with that strategy. Um, lots of other people were set playing similar lists, but that's where the testing lend us. We also had a Bravo from our test group do very well. Uh, two more lightning briars and earth briar as well. And I was working on the earth briar list for quite a while myself. And in the end, I just didn't feel like I got it to a good place. Um, even though my testing partners had put a lot more time into it and they got it to a good place for them, I just felt like the Lightning Briar list was strong and I was really happy with how that was going to turn out. Um, so where do we go to from that? So I show up um, to the Blitz event. To the Blitz event, I took a Death Dealer Lexi list. I had never played, um, just seen and thought, hey, this looks fun. I wasn't testing for Blitz. I had no intention of practicing for Blitz. So that was fine. Um, I essentially took that list. I went 0-2. I played some people who just couldn't handle the amount of damage it was putting out. And then essentially I ran into two Dorinthias, which is a really hard matchup for that list. And they really came at me with the classic um, 
you know, I'm attacking, okay, I fully block it because I can't afford to take the damage, and I have a three of a kind and a tunic counter, so I'm like, block with three cards, keep that in the arsenal, and then he steel blade supremacies into a twinning blade, has a glint, the quicksilver in hand, so he lands the first hit, um, I can't block anymore, um, so he lands uh, a hit with the sword, triggers Dorinthia, then plays um, glint to let go of Glenn, and then comes in um, for another four. So he kind of just does that. I take eight damage and then I can't coming back from that. The other Dorinthia was just very good, played a lot of buffs that didn't require a reprise. So I couldn't really get away without blocking and I was punished for not blocking, which is how it sort of ended up. So I dropped at that point because I really was still thinking, okay, I've only played 20 games with this Briarless. Let's go and practice a bit more. And then I went to practice in the hotel, played about three or four games against some Rhinars, um, Dorinthia's, um, a mirror game or two, just to get the last bit of CC practice in to remind myself that I have practiced that deck. It is straightforward. It does do good aggro. And then I felt confident for the next day. Had a bit of a chat about draft strategy in the end with my friends. And then we basically went to bed, stopped playing Flesh and Blood, and just like, okay, let's we're done. Let's go to bed. Let's see how tomorrow fares. So then at that point, you're kind of good. You go to bed. Didn't have the greatest of sleeps. There was something going weird with the air conditioning in the hotel room that made me snore really badly, even though I don't usually... Um, honestly, like I genuinely don't usually. Um, and my the, the person who I stayed in the room with snore really badly as well. So we both basically kept each other awake for ages, which wasn't ideal. My nose was running all night. So I didn't sleep amazingly well. And the pillows weren't great either. So it was a bit rough waking up in the morning. Had breakfast, obviously, nice and early. Um, went and got ready for the main event. Round one, I played a Bravo who had never seen the Lightning Briar list before. So didn't really know what to do about it. Tried to block me out, which obviously didn't work. Um, I finished that game on 20 life um, and really just kept the pressure up the entire time and he was just blocking and hammer swinging. I took a hammer every now and then and then just kept swinging, swinging, swinging and, and pretty much demolished him, um, which felt good. Then I went up against a Reinar. Um, he did get me a bit worried because he came in with stuff like triple barraging beatdown on turn two. Uh, on turn one, sorry, he dropped me down to 30 life. He came in with another three barraging beatdowns because he was running all nine of them. Um, a few turns later, he really did put me on the back foot a bit. But ultimately, he was not blocking because he was doing all of those things, which meant that I could build my embodiment tokens and block very efficiently. Um, so eventually, then he started playing more defensively. But at that point, I was already adding the pressure and getting a good cadence of embodiment tokens. So it was really easy to basically keep the pressure up and take him down. Um, so that game, I wasn't really too pressured afterwards. So I was on 2-0 on day one when i went up against the person who had practiced the lightning lexi deck more than i had because he'd had it for a few weeks um matt forks who obviously went in to win the whole event on 15 and 0 um and ultimately this game i feel came down to the dice roll i had not played this mirror enough i would played maybe one game and this is the problem with switching very late in the field um so i won the dice roll and i thought to myself how is this going to go down if I go first, he's going to block with his whole hand. I'm probably not going to get that much damage through. And then he's going to swing at me with a full hand and I'm going to be forced onto the back foot into blocking. Right? That's how I thought it was going to go down. I really misthought that, okay? And I'll explain why in a second. And I thought being on the play into the deck, forcing him to spend cards to stop me getting embodiments was the best way to play. It was not. I was completely wrong about that. On the first turn, I drew three cards that blocked for two and a ball lightning. He came in with two, uh, a non-attack action, a plunder run, yellow, um, and two, um, four go again attacks. Um, I think it was um, two ra a ravenous rabble and something else. So he came in basically with, I'm going to draw a card if this hits, and I've got another go again. Obviously, I blocked the first one with four. And then I blocked the second one for two, but it hit, he drew a card, and then he rosetted me, right? At this point, I had taken seven damage on turn one. I was down to 33. Not great. To be fair to myself, turn two happened. I came back with 16 damage, and I got him down, even though he blocked, to 32, right? But he kept enough cards in hand to put the pressure back on me. And we essentially traded blows then for about five or six turns, blocking with good non-attack actions and embodiment tokens, 
where possible to stop card draw and then coming in with one or two attacks, you know, like like back and forth on the tempo um, until ultimately we were both down to about four to six HP. I swung in, but unfortunately it wasn't for lethal um, with an E-strike. He blocked just enough to go down to one and then came back with enough cards to kill me. And that was the game. I have a feeling that if I had gone first, I would have won that game. My hand had two go-agains and an, an on-attack action, just like his did. I could have easily played attack action, non-attack action, um, go again, Rosetta, come in for about five or six damage. Um, so I made, a, I made a mistake due to lack of experience in the mirror, and then I lost my first game, right? Then we go into um, the draft. I correctly read my pool and draft old him. I am one of two old hims in that draft. Um, I think it was two Ultims, four Briars, and two Lexis. Um, I think. I'm not I'm not entirely sure, but that's what I think it was. Um, so we did very well on the Ultim cards. I got four defense reactions, uh, one red, two yellow, and one blue turn timber. I got about eight blue earth cards. I got about three blue ice cards. Um, I got about ten cards that block for three in the elemental cards. And I got 20 guardian cards, uh, including emerging avalanches, thumps, all that kind of good stuff. Um, and basically, I was able to, due to the amount of cards I got, fatigue most of the people I played against. I went up against a um, Lexi first, and initially I thought, let's hit them and get them to block some cards. But really, they had so much go again that I ended up just blocking out a lot of what they could, of what I could with my defense reactions, and generally just stopping um, the flow of their game until they ran out of red cards, and then I could fatigue them. Um, it was a bit of a grey area, basically, because they had got me down quite low, but I had successfully blocked and got them down quite low as well. And then we were going into the final turns, but we hadn't been playing fast enough, so we ran out of time. Um, and what happens in that situation is that the person finishes their turn, and then you play one more turn, and then the round ends. Now, the problem here, essentially, was that I had thought to myself, I if he hits me on his last turn... I have stalled this game so much, I'm actually going to give him the win because um, I feel like he'd play a better game. He would kill me eventually if we had another turn because he had like eight cards left and all he had to do was dominate something. Um, and I really was running out. I had about four or five cards left. I was running out of options, basically. And I had one big play left to make that might win me the game, but wasn't really going to win me the game. So if he had attacked me, I probably would have let it through and given him the win, even if I could block it out, because I didn't really want to draw. Um, I dislike drawing in tournaments, um, unless it's going to really benefit my friends. Um, I really won't won't draw. Um, you know, like if I'm in a top cut and uh, and drawing will benefit a teammate higher up the um, up the ladder, I will draw a game, but I tend not to do it in Swiss. I just I, th I think it it does it punishes people for playing well and just not being able to close the game. Um, so if he had attacked me, I would have let it through. Unfortunately, he did not have an attack in his hand, so he passed to me. At which point, I'm probably not going to win. It's probably going to go to a draw, but I have a an ice quake and a thump. No, I have Cracker Jacks and a Thump. So I Cracker Jacks my Thump and come in for five. If he has all two blocks, I can win. If he has a three block, I can't. And then he decides, because he doesn't want to draw either, to take the damage. So he takes the damage, I win. I'm feeling kind of bad because I'm the reason the game went to time on my old him. So I grind him out because I grinded him out. But equally, we were both playing slightly slowly. So it wasn't necessarily all on me, but I did opt for that tactic, which was a problem. Uh, my second game then was into a uh, Briar deck. Um, ultimately, what that came down to was I had some nice dominates that I set up. I had a ni enough Earth cards to regularly block the Arcane. It was a close game. It went down to about three or four um, on either side. But I was able to close out the game just through that consistent Earth pitch to block Arcane. Smash back with the hammer. Those kind of things just fatiguing and playing that sort of steady gameplay style. And then my third game was against another Lexi. And it was very much a repeat of the first game, but a bit more fatigue -y. Um, And also, I will say this about the third game. I feel kind of bad about it. I was very, very worried about going to time like I had in the first game. So I did push my opponent to play faster, which he was fine with. But I feel like both of us then played a little bit too fast. And there were a few more mistakes made in the game. And we actually finished with 10 minutes left. So that was kind of like on both of us. We sped up a bit too much in response to me being nervous about going to time again. Because I had made it pretty clear to him that my strategy was fatigue. 
and that we you know how many cards have you got left in your deck? Okay, let's go and playing reasonably fast, demanding that he made plays in a reasonable time. But then I stopped, you know, then he sped up a bit too much and I wasn't going to slow him down because we were playing at my speed because I play quite fast. And I do feel like little mistakes were made and things weren't ideal. Um, there were a few take backs. He allowed, I allowed him a take, a change. He allowed me a change kind of before we had successfully finished pitching. And then we kept just going through and we finished the game of 10 minutes to go. So it was a bit, it was a bit too fast. But again, I fatigued him. He had no cards left in his deck and I just smashed him with a hammer. And then I killed him because I had 12 cards left in my deck. And I went 3-0 out of that draft. Then I went, so I was 5-1 because we did three rounds of CC, three rounds of draft and I was 5-1. At this point, I was feeling very, very confident because I only needed one more win to make the top cut. And I thought, well, I've already done 2-1 in CC. So if I do another 2-1... I'm actually on um I'm actually on eight and eight and um on seven and two, which is a guaranteed top cut, and then I only need to win two games in the top cut to get in um in the top cut tw twenty-four to get into the actual top eight. So I was feeling quite confident, which was a problem. I failed to understand or um properly gauge exactly how much um the break to do draft had messed with my cc mindset and my cc concentration and this kind of my initial feedback video which has been out there for a few days now um you know kind of runs through that because you can see me like just after i get knocked out of the the draft um you know giving feedback on my my impressions on the tournament but really i fail to understand how much the draft in the middle of the CC rounds, knocked my concentration and my my practice with CC that I was ready for out. And really, I mean, this I keep saying, you know, LSS need to change. We can't do a draft in the middle of CC. There were multiple problems with it that I've detailed in other videos. It, it cannot go ahead again. It really needs to be done at the start um, and then just at the start and then go into CC and let people get into a CC groove. My first game then after the draft was against Dyson, who is um, David Dyson, who is part of my testing group. And um, so I played that matchup a lot. I am favoured in that matchup heavily, even after the changes he made to his deck to address Lightning Briar. Um, I hadn't actually lost a game playing that matchup before that round. Um, so I went in, I went in hard. I blocked his um, crushes with my armour. I blocked perfectly um, and embodiments. Really sadly, what happened and what can happen with that Lightning Briar deck is one hand I drew non-attack actions. Uh, the next hand I drew attack actions. Then I drew non-attack actions again. I played a Sonata, pitching a blue to actually do it for four, just in the hopes of getting an attack I could play. It didn't. It showed me four attacks rather than a non-attack action and an attack. And then I basically had no embodiments for three turns, so I couldn't block his crush effects, so he could take it over the line. I do really feel, I mean, Dyson played a great game. He, he crushed the right things. He came in with the right strategy, put me on the defensive a little bit, so I couldn't just keep the pressure up. But I do, you know, I, Lightning Briar is definitely favored in that matchup um as we saw in the finals so i do really feel that if i hadn't drawn non-attack actions on those two turns or whiffed on the sonata i probably could have taken that matchup and then i was a bit worried because after that matchup I, i'd gone in being like well i only i only have to win one game out of three to get into the top cut and then i just lost the first game and i was like dear god this is gonna be a wipeout isn't it you know i was starting to get worried and then I realized that my next game was against Ice Lexi, which is a game I 100% did not expect to play, had not tested for. Um, I did not expect there to be any Ice Lexis. I kind of dismissed the deck as not being consistent enough to make it that far in the tournament. I expected maybe I'd run into one earlier, but the player wouldn't be very good. And then here I was running on, into an Ice Lexi who was also on six, um, on five and two, thinking, what the hell is this deck doing here? And how do I deal with it? And he was a good player, as expected. Um, and he really did control me out of the gate with Frostbite and things like that, slowing down the amount of damage I could do, just making me block ineffectively with armor and all these kind of things. Um, however, I was quite lucky in that he used Frostlock very badly. Um, it was kind of my feedback to him after the game as well. He chucked Frostlock at the end of a chain a few times when I had the ability to just block it with armor or block it with armor and a card from hand. Um, and really, you know, I just blocked Frostlock every time he played it, and he defended with one. So then all three Frostlocks were gone, and I was like, okay, that's a big threat gone. He blocked with a Channel Lake Frigid on turn one, which it was probably the right call, but then he played another one, and it went away the next turn. So two Channel Lake Frigids are gone. So we're in a situation where actually his red arrows are starting to run out a little bit, because I'm just on the defensive, um, because I can't attack. 
Um, and I've still got a load of reds. And his control is starting to crack because of how much I'm blocking. So we get into a situation where he's not applying as much control. And a lot of his power control cards like Frostlock and Channel 8 Frigid are gone. So even though he was 20 life ahead of me, I actually started to claw back the life lead until we were equal on 10 and 10. And then I thought maybe I have a chance to win this. But obviously the good thing about Lexi and his deck especially is he had a lot of things like Weave Ice, Polar Blast, ways to get Dominate. Um, and he used those to get Dominate on his attacks, which then of course let him chip away at my life while I was forced to try and block with anything and chip away at his. It was a very close game. I feel like if I had gotten one or two more things going my way, I definitely would have pulled ahead and taken the matchup. Um, but ultimately his life lead was too big for me to actually win it back. And in the end, he did win that game. So there I am, having gone 5-1, thinking I just need one more game to win. Actually being on 5-3, and three, being, okay, if I don't win the next game, I'm not making day two. And that was not a pleasant situation to be in. And then I get paired up against Dash, which is a winnable matchup, depending on what items they get and how they control you. Um for the lightning list. And it is a matchup that I had practiced a bit. So I know the lightning list can win that matchup very handily. But um ultimately it comes down a little bit to what items they get and how how they quickly they set up so we start off the game i'm coming in strong he's using his defense reactions things are going fine he's running out of defense reactions he's used a bit of armor i'm like okay this is a match i'm good for but then he gets a second induction chamber on turn three I think it was turn three. So after two turns, I, yeah, I thought I was in a good place. But then he gets the second induction chamber. And he starts shooting me for six a turn. And I'm like, this is not good. If he gets a purifier out, I am genuinely screwed. But I have to just keep the pressure up. I'm taking the induction chambers. Smash, smash, smash. And we get very low on life. But I'm still coming in strong. And we go on to his last turn. I'm on six health. And he's on five, I think. And he comes in. No, he tries to use Teclo Foundry Heart. Again, this happened a lot during the tournament. Uh, people using Teclo Foundry Heart without boosting. He tries to use Teclo Foundry Heart without boosting. He picks the card up. It kind of picks it up off the top of his deck so it's perpendicular. But he hasn't really looked at it yet. He, I say, wait, no, stop. You can't do that. Um, and then he puts the card back down. He says, I say, did you see the card? He says, no. I say, okay, I'll believe you. But, you know, that's really not great. And we're umming and ahhing a bit. And then he says, well, I'm actually going to play a boost card. And I'm like, okay, this is a bit weird because you have just like theoretically seen it. And he had offered for me to shuffle his deck to fix it. And I was like, I'm I'm not doing that because that's not really the fix um, as well because I know the rules. Um, and then he played a boost card. So I kind of let him get away with looking at the card, even if he did said he didn't see it. But then he played a boost card and I was like, okay, I'm actually a bit iffy about this. And then he said, and then he said, I really don't feel comfortable um, playing this boost card because it because this is the thing most of the people at this tournament like all of the stream hate and things aside were good players who knew the rules and were there to play the best game possible so my opponent said i don't really feel comfortable boosting now without resolving the fact that i may have seen the card even though i didn't properly look at it so then we said okay look let's just sort this out officially should have done this earlier but we did put up the hand call the judge judge says okay the proper resolution for this in a competitive event is that you as his opponent get to look at the top card of his deck, and after that you get to decide if he gets to, um, if it goes on the top or the bottom. Now for me, of course, that is a massive advantage, because he is about to boost, right? And I get to look at the card and say whether it goes on the top or the bottom. So obviously if it's a boost card, I can say no and chance my luck again. It turns out to be a fate for scene, at which point I look at his floating resources, I look at his um, card ha cards in hand and I say, he's coming in for five. I will take five down to one because he can't kill me without the boost. He uses his Achilles Accelerator, shoots me for two, which I block with armor, uh, the tunic and the skull cap, which is now active again. And then we go into my turn. I have a five card hand. I lay it on hard. I take him out, right? So I felt like that was a good resolution. It's important to understand that the card that he saw was going to be a boost card or not, regardless of whether I saw it as well. That's why the resolution for that is to let me look at it and make a decision. Because ultimately, if he saw it and it wasn't a boost card and he let me shuffle his deck, that's a massive favor to him. 
if he looked at it and it was a boost card, that's a massive knowledge advantage to him in terms of how he plays his hand. Letting me look at it and decide what to do with it is the fairest way to resolve that situation. There's no real other way to resolve that situation fairly except to let me look at the card and make a decision as to whether or not it benefits him. Because otherwise he gets free information and then gets to play. Whereas I, you know, do get free information, but I didn't make the mistake. So that was a good way to resolve it. It sucks that that led to him losing the game, but equally at that point, you know, the card would have been that card because I didn't move it, right? So actually nothing in the game changed because I chose not to put the card on the bottom. So he was going to boost that card anyway by playing the decision to boost it, right? So, you know, it resolved. I made it into day two, six and three, which meant I was in the top 16 pod rather than the top nine pod, which means I basically needed to go um, two one, but probably realistically, it, it, I either needed to go two one and lose the last game, not the second game, and then be reasonably lucky with how other people did, or I needed to go three and zero, right? Which is a lot of pressure in the draft, but I felt somewhat confident because I'd done it before and I practiced a lot more draft than other people, so I felt pretty confident, and I had a very good drafting strategy with Earth and then pivoting into old him. Um, so we go into the draft on day two. I sit down. Um, I opened first pick. I think I took a yellow um, Earth Autumn's Touch. Um, I love Autumn's Touch. It blocks for three, um, comes in for six. Um, you know, it's a really nice card. And there wasn't really anything stand out. In my second pack, I basically have to choose between a Turn Timber and a Ball Lightning. Now, Ball Lightning is a fantastic card. It's a red or a Turn Timber yellow. But I think Turn Timber is a much, much better card. And it's a rare, so you're not really likely to see them. So I take the Turn Timber. Then I took another Earth card. I think it was maybe a, um, a So Tomorrow Blue, or maybe I took a Winter's Grasp, the, the one that blocks for three in Ice then, because um, I was kind of getting the feeling that I might be playing Old Him, so I started to take some Ice and Earth cards if they were coming up. Um, and then pick four, I got another Turn Timber, at which point I was kind of thinking Old Him is open, because I've been past what I consider to be a pack one, pick one card by three different people, right? Um, you know, Turn Timber, as far as I'm concerned, is, is one of the best cards in 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 draft. Um, it lets you block Dominate. It confused to let you block a lot of Dominate, um, and also, you know, if you get it, it blocks for a lot for the colors. Like the blue blocks for four, the red blocks for six slash eight. You know, the blue can block for six, so it's just an amazing card. And I got a, I had two I had a yellow two yellows by the time we finished pick four. At which point I'm thinking, okay, can I just draft Guardian from here on out? My next pack comes along, it has a So Tomorrow Red. I'm like, awesome. My next pack after that has a Glacial Footsteps Blue. I'm like, no one is looking at these amazing Guardian cards. Maybe I get a little sidetracked from looking at Earth and Ice cards for a minute. But I did check the Earth and Ice cards, and there was nothing spectacular taken or missing. There was a lot of two blocks, reds. I didn't want them. So I took the Guardian cards, and I was just loading up on Guardian cards because um, I kept getting past fire. And then later on in the pack, we kind of just ran out of cards. And the only cards left were Lexi. For about picks 13, 14, and 15. And I said, fuck. Sorry, shouldn't swear. No one is playing Lexi, right? Can I pivot? At this point, I've drafted about five Earth cards, two Ice cards, and about four Guardian cards. I cannot pivot. And the cards I've got are very good. So I'm there just thinking, hopefully someone else sees Lexi is wide open and pivots. It didn't happen, right? It didn't happen. Pick two, I opened a Coat of Frost, uh, a Blue Winter's Grasp, and a... It doesn't matter. I took the Blue Winter's Grasp over the Coat of Frost. It was a coal foil, but whatever. Um, you know, pitches for blue, blocks for three, perfect, right? And then I do, coming left actually get a lot of good both earth ice and guardian cards coming which tells me that there aren't a lot of guardians to my left either which is worrying me or like immediately to my left or i'm kind of like what are they drafting right i know the person to the left of me is drafting runeblade because i have passed them amazing runeblade cards right um and if they didn't take runeblade i would be shocked so i kind of know that i'm insulated a little bit from people counter drafting me on the left so i do get some good cards on the right on the left but again, when we get down to the last 10 to 15 picks, there is a lot of both Briar and Lexi stuff going around. And I'm starting to think, fuck, 
no, is no one taking Briar? Who's taking Lexi? Like, what is going on in this draft? And then pack three happens. I get some good cards early on. And then again, by pick 10, everything that's left is Lexi. And everyone pretty much takes about three or four Lexi cards just out of the back. Bottom, uh, bottom five cards. And it is not good, right? So then I'm starting to think I read the signals correctly. But things pivoted and things did not go the way that I thought they would go in the end. Um, and it was it was it was not good. So I then we basically had a situation where um it came out afterwards that there had been five Ultim drafts drafters in that pod, one Lexi drafter and two Briars. Unsurprisingly, the two Briars had very good decks, the Lexi had a very, very good deck. I had a very good old him deck because of where I was sitting. The person to the right of me had also drafted old him and yet passed me loads of really good old him cards. He did not actually have a good old him deck despite having drafted old him. And the reason was that he had taken too many bad elemental cards at the start, left the good old him cards to me. And then by the time that he needed old him cards, there weren't any left. So he desperately clawed the old him cards back in packs in pack two and three but i passed him no good ultim cards in pack two and then in pack three he took as many as he could get and passed me a lot of good elemental cards which i then filled up on the person on the other side of the table from me john ho also had a good ultim deck and there was another good ultim deck sort of three seats down but two of those people screwed themselves by drafting ultim when they should have pivoted into lexi right or briar um the two briar players had very good decks but they faced each other in round one uh, no, in round two. So they kind of knocked each other out. Um, and then I didn't play against them. Um, but I went in against another old him who didn't have as good deck as me in round one. Uh, and essentially I fatigued him out and got off a good red thump. Um, and that let me win the game. It wasn't a, like a massive blowout game, but I successfully managed to set up my red thump and he didn't draw a thump despite having um, a setup aura every turn, so I could basically knock his cards down, and that basically won me the game, going in with a red thump powered up with an uh, merging avalanche. Uh, and even though he played a strength of Sequoia every turn, for like three turns, he didn't see the thump, which kind of was like my saviour. Um, otherwise, I would have been really in trouble. Then I went up against the Ice Lexi, and this is kind of where the kind of tiredness of the weekend and the stress of the draft just going so badly got to me. Um, we were playing very well. He was coming in with a lot of Dominate. I was hitting back when he did that with a big attack. Um, you know, and we were both kind of on, I think, 5 and 6. Uh, no, I was on 12 and he was on 9. Uh, on the turn when stuff went bad for me. He, um, I had um, 3 cards in hand. An Ice Quake, 2 Guardian cards, uh, a Summerwood Shelter Red. He came in with a um, an Electrify Yellow and a Fused Buzz Bolt. Um, and I made, this is where I basically lost. I made the mistake of blocking with the Ice Quake um, for two with the hopes of playing Summerwood Shelter to go for six, fully blocking the attack and the Electrify and then having the Summerwood Shelter in my discard pile to pick up with Plume of Evergrowth for the next dominated attack, right? Because I had a Plume at this point. Um, and essentially, obviously, people who understand the game are smashing themselves at this point you can't summer would shelter an ice card. It has to be earth or elemental. If I had just taken the red card out of my hand, I could have pit done exactly what I intended and blocked for seven. But I was trying to optimize the turn. I ended up optimizing it badly. He hit me for six, taking me down to six. And the next turn, he overflexed into a dominated arrow. I didn't have summer would shelter in my discard pile as I had planned. I couldn't block it and I lost the game. And I do really think it came down to that because if he hadn't, if I hadn't misblocked that, I would have had two cards in hand. I was going to arsenal one and then pitch the other one for the hammer. And then I would have blocked again on the next turn, had two cards again, and be able to pitch a card to play the attack from, I think it was a blue snow, a, a red snow under, come in for seven. He would have been forced to block and the tempo would have come back to me. Maybe it wouldn't have been a victory, but we were both quite low and I feel like I could have pressured him out in that instance. So it was a bit shit that that happened, basically. Um, at that point, I have lost um, earlier than I basically needed to. I'm going into the last game being like, maybe if I get 8-4, I can sneak in if everyone else really loses who was supposed to win and wins who was supposed to lose. But I'm going into one of the Briars who drafted very well. 
He's also a friend of mine, uh, Dan Tripp from the testing group, so I know he's a good player. And basically, I have to pressure him. I don't get very good defensive hands. I do, however, line up some Ice Quake big attacks. We both go down fairly low on HP, but at that point, it gets a bit difficult because the Arcane from Briar makes it very hard to sustain. And I unfortunately did not draft enough Earth Blues really to block the Arcane. I get him down to one. He gets me down to three. And then we, he just chips away at the Arcane until he kills me. And he goes 8-4, but unfortunately neither of us had strength of schedule good enough to get into the top cut. So that unfortunately was where my run ended. Um, it was still how good, however, because um, three of players from my testing group, so Sharif, Simon, and Hamish, all got into the top cut. I'd help all of them practice their decks and pick their decks for the tournament. So I was, whilst not winning myself, my preparation for the event had helped people get into the top four. Um, and I came 16th in the event. So, I mean, I was happy with my performance, annoyed that my CC concentration was, was broken. I didn't get it back um, for the second round of CC on day one. And obviously that I got paired up against Ice Lexi when there weren't that many there. And I could have got paired up against anyone else. Um, and that I lost the Bravo game to drawing non-attack actions and whiffing on a Sonata as well. And of course that I fucked, you know, I messed up in the draft and I didn't block properly and I, I you know, I, I screwed up. So I, you know, in my mind, this is where I come away with quite a positive. I'm happy my friends won. I had a fantastic weekend drinking, eating, just sitting there talking fab, playing fab nonstop. I had a great time. And really, you know, the fact that my friends did well and got gold foils and you know PTI invites made top four, two of them and almost made the finals and all this other stuff. I, I feel like I won, even though I didn't win. Because that's ultimately what this game is about. I'm here for myself. I love to perform. I also love to see people that I have worked with help perform too. And I really, you know, I do that if I work with someone. I love to see them perform. My friends, people I play with, coach, those kind of things. So, you know, I'm not just winning, you know. when And I said this before when I did the Katsu deck tech. And people were messaging me saying, I took your deck tech. I top eight it. I top four at RTN. I love that. I love hearing that. And I love it when it's people I've worked with a lot, like I've played 30, 40 games with, I've done drafts with, I've done all that practice with. When they win, it's like, yes, I helped. We did that. They're great, but, but I helped as well. I gave them feedback. That piece of advice I gave them helped win. The fact that we tested that matchup 10 times helped them tweak their deck. Like All of that feeds into their win. And I feel like I share that win with them. Obviously, they own it themselves. They, they put in the work and they're a good player, but I feel like I participate in that win. And when they win or lose, I, I go along with them, just like your sports team that you play with. And then we went for a massive feed in an Indian nearby. There was a giant leg of lamb, this delicious gravy, really good naan bread, mango lassies, all that kind of stuff. I loaded up on food. I almost ate too much. I was, you know, it was too much. Um, went back to the hotel room, didn't play any more flesh and blood just because we were done. Had some beers, went to bed, got the train home this morning. And obviously here I am recording these videos for you to go out over the week. Um, and just to say that, you know, if you can get to nationals, even if you're not going, go for the battle harden, go for the side events, you know, go to support your friends who are in the in the cut, be with them, give them advice, help them practice. Even if it's not your win, it can be a group win. And just, you know, these sorts of tournaments, the callings, the nationals, when you go with friends, they are the best weekends you'll have in flesh and blood. I can't understate that. Just have a fantastic time. I had a fantastic time and I know other people will as well. Thanks for listening. I've been Steel Fur. This is my third video of the week. I did promise I would do more after Nationals finished. I do have other plans this week to look at the Ice Lexi list, which I've been kindly given by the player who made the cut. Um, I want to look at an Agro Viscerai list that made the cut as well when that gets published, as well as the Earth Briar list um, that got published as well. Um, and just basically do some more deck text from the calling for you guys. Um, sorry, from the Nationals for you guys to help you people who are going to um, US Nationals. Probably not going to be able to help the US Nationals guys because they're this weekend. But certainly the Nationals that come after that, I want videos that are going to help you understand the meta. Um, I may also do a new tier list video after um, US Nationals or at least before this weekend of the decks to expect to face in the top eight of US Nationals. It might be a bit late to help you guys, but I definitely want to help you if I can. So have a great day and see you all soon.